Greetings. I am Chief Kalinago. I am a descendant of the ancient Americans. I am indigenous to the Americas. I am a descendant of the copper colored races that was found here in the Americas by the Europeans, the pilgrims, the invaders, the colonizers, the thieves when they first came to our shores. But now that term American is being applied to the children of the pilgrims. If you look at the definition of American in the Noah's Webster's 1820 dictionary, I'm going to paraphrase. It means the copper colored races, the natives, the aboriginals that was found in the Americas when the, Europe when the Europeans came. And now the term is being applied to the children of the Europeans. My story, my ancestor's story has been mistold. My story, my ancestor's story, it has been whitewashed. My ancestors were not slaves who came to the Americas on boats. My ancestors did not come from slaves. However, my ancestors were enslaved in their own lands. My ancestors were the ones who built pyramids. My ancestors were the ones who built mounds. My ancestors built civilizations. I came from a bloodline of royalty. My ancestors were the ones who built civilization along the Nile from the Americas that ran right into Africa. I am here to tell the world who I am. The Europeans first came to our shores. They called us American Indians. By default, I am an American Indian. Before the colonizers came, over 95% of the Americas, the people looked just like me. So when we say, let us make America great again, what does that mean? Does that mean that you are going to give the land that was stolen back to the indigenous people? What does that mean? Does it mean that you're going to give credit to the original people that was found here in the Americas? What does that mean? Does that mean that you are going to allow the indigenous people of the Americas to live their own lives? What does that mean? What does that mean? John Jacques, Dima, same video. I know. Tell me, what do you think? Oh, uh, what do you think of this act so far? This is the perfect time for the day with these people opening the carnival. Why? Because there are a bunch of Indians, which are the old time um, people who used to live here. Residents. Residents, exactly. Indians. Yeah. So here they are. Boyo, which is an Indian name. And enjoy the show with the Indian people from Haiti now. <laughs> Hello, I'm William Attlee, and this is a news brief with truth. See the men on the screen. They are the ancestors of the African American, but there is a problem their true identity. Thomas McNeely has the story. Well, William, the African-American community is deeply divided due to the tagline, African-Americans ain't Africans, which can be found in numerous places on the web. Now, it should be obvious as to why it's causing a commotion, but if it escapes you, let me explain. 
The current American education states African Americans were brought to America as slaves from Africa, which is simply not true. They are American indigenous, not descendants of Africans. As they say, the truth is stranger than fiction. Although this fact isn't spoken of openly, it's not a secret. However, with programming such as Roots, 12 Years a Slave, The African American Story, and The Book of Negroes, is it any wonder why so many African Americans are confused? We won't address all the misleading DNA tests being provided to connect African Americans to Africa. So, the argument is, do they continue identifying as African Americans, which is a fake identity for them, or embrace being identified as indigenous Americans. Are there any consequences of choosing one identity over the other? Uh, William, that's a good question. Um, according to African Americans Ain't Africans Facebook forum, identifying as African American is to quietly relinquish ancestral connections to America. Connections that go back hundreds of thousands of years. A curious story, but one appropriate for February, which is Black History Month in the United States. Uh, what's a conundrum? A story worth keeping an eye on for further developments. Thank you, Thomas. The drawing used in this presentation is from the 16th century book, America being the latest and most accurate description of the New World by John Ogilvy and Arnoldus Montanus. As you may have guessed, the men in the drawing are American. I'm William Attlee and this has been a News Brief with Truth. Just what we're looking for to represent who we are. I believe that a Shinnecock woman is someone who is respectful, grateful and sets a good example. She takes pride in her culture and takes, makes the effort to pass down her culture's history. In the late 1800s, there was something called the Dolls Rolls, which was basically a census that made records of people's ethnic backgrounds in order to determine which Native American tribes would get certain land allotments and other benefits. After slavery, many black people were associated with some of these tribes by bloodline, through marriage, through adoption, and even servitude. And because they were associated with these tribes, many black people were entitled to some of these benefits. The government did not want blacks to get these benefits, so they created a separate freedmen's list specifically for black people. They also started to list any full-blooded Native American who had African features as black because they didn't want them getting those benefits either. At the same time, they allowed white citizens to come in and pay money under the table to be listed as part Native American. Uh, 1890, 1895 and 1896, when a lot of the whites found out the benefits that, that, these, that these blacks were going to be entitled to, a lot of whites went to the Dawes Commission and said, look, uh, why don't you put my name on there? And they said, but you're not an Indian. So that's what they said, well, I'll give you $5. So they, then the rule got around, the posse got around that, that for $5, that a white could put his name on the Dawes Rolls and be called himself an Indian and be entitled to all these benefits and all their children could be entitled to all these benefits forever. And so that's, that became known as what's called a $5 Indian. And so if you go around now and check most of the Indians, the so-called Indians in America, about 90% of them are not even Indians. They're just whites now who are passing as Indians. And but they're getting all the benefits. And they're not paying any taxes, getting free college education. They put up a little reservation on the land that they don't live on. They have another home off uh, and get all kind of benefits. Iron Eyes Cody was another famous Native American person um, he was in the media for years. Um, in the 1970s, they utilized him for this uh, pollution commercial. He was known as the Crying Indian. So he was a very well-known Native American in um, American culture. But the reality is, Iron Eyes Cody wasn't Native American at all. He was Sicilian. Both of his parents were from Sicily. So he didn't have one drop of Native American blood in him. He was another fake Indian. One hundred years later, the Negro is still languishing in the corners of American society and finds himself in exile in his own land. Now, have you ever wondered what that passage meant from Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech? I did, and what I found was, 
One of the biggest secrets that's not really a secret at all except to many African Americans is they are not descended from Africans. <laughs> I know, I was shocked too, so much so that I asked Africans and they agreed African Americans weren't Africans. If you don't believe me, Google Arnaldus Montanus America and see the people he saw in 1671. Read books like The Black American Handbook for Survival Through the 21st Century by Raydine Amonra, What Every African American Should Know by Carrie Davis, and Africans and Native Americans by Jack Forbes. <laughs> I just can't believe schools aren't teaching this stuff. What a travesty. My ancestors knew who they were, so they fought for our land, but obviously they were outnumbered. So we, the indigenous people, the American Aborigine, the American Indian, we have become exiled in our own home. America is our home. America is a continent. America is my home. I am indigenous to the Americas. Once again, I am here to tell the story of my ancestors. I am Chief Kalanago. Thank you.